I was more of a, a team sport kind of person in the first place and triathlon is very individual. And um, so just being able to, to work together with somebody was something that I personally really loved from this swim run sport. <laughs> Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I am Chip. And I'm Chris. And welcome to episode 33 of the show. On this week, we have Team Cali Swim Run Girls on the show. They are uh, Carolyn Wolek and Kelsey Pearson out of Southern California and are part of the swim run crew with Andy Hewitt, Sean Durkin, the Swim Run Bronx, and the rest of that crew. But more on that later in the show. Yes, so for our Low Tide Boys training update... We actually, uh, due to two things, a nice down sort of recovery week from Chris completing his One Punch Man challenge and uh, Chipper just being a follower, uh, we decided to take take it easy this week. And we had some pretty severe heat as well as some thunderstorms. So we had thunder and lightning storms this whole week. So we actually didn't get out and do a swim run practice this week for the first time in a while. Yeah, it was weird not to swim on the weekend. First time at in a all. while, yeah. Yeah, for the first time since the pool opened, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I, I, minus I, the week I was on vacation. And I hope this isn't pissing people off. We still don't have access to pools or open water, but yeah, yeah I, we're, not, we're not trying to like throw shade on anybody. <laughs> totally. We actually had our swim on Sunday canceled due to thunderstorms. Uh, that was uh, the highlight of, of the week there. Yeah, it was actually kind of funny. The, the rules seemed kind of strange. It was like 30 minutes from when the last time the lifeguard saw lightning you could you you could swim so our swim session was from seven to eight our our lanes which we yeah. love reserve lanes and everyone was just waiting it's like yeah you have to you have to wait until seven sixteen, and we're like okay that's not too bad and then lightning we just saw lightning right then and they were like all right we're out <laughs> see you later yeah it was it was pretty it was pretty funny but uh yeah so back in the pool this morning and and we're good to go on to the shout outs for this week. Yeah, so this week we're shouting out our newest patron on Patreon, Carolyn. She's not new to the show. She's been a supporter since the beginning, uh, since we launched in January. And we've been friends with her way before then. So, Carolyn, thank you for the support. It really helps us pay for hosting fees and all that stuff. So, appreciate you. Yes, thank you very much on that. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Cue the air horn. <laughs> The Feats of Endurance Weekly Award. Now, sometimes you're running around your block 50-something times or a 50-miler around your block. Sometimes you are doing a swim run training in upstate New York. Or other times you're just being consistent. Like Rob from San Salmo right here in, in Northern California. He's been just like a clock. Yeah. Swim, bike, run. Doesn't matter what it is, he's getting he's getting some good work in every single day of the week. So kudos to you, Rob. Yes. Sticker is in the mail once we find out where you live. Yes. Not and, in a weird way. And a factoid about Rob, I believe he's one half of one of my favorite team names from Catalina. Yes. Uh, the gin and, gin and tonics. tonics. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So enjoy. We need a photo from you drinking a gin and tonic. And there, in the background, has to be the bumper sticker on your car, and we'll we'll share it. But you're not drive. You're at home. You're not driving. Yeah, yeah. You're obviously, yeah. You can't be Drink driving. Drink responsibly, everybody. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, so we have a new segment alert. That's that's right. So because we didn't come up with any new shit to do for about a week well, and a half. That's not true. We actually did put some new shit out there. Oh, you're right. Oh man, foreshadowing. Yeah, so... We didn't come up with two new things this week. Just Yeah, <laughs> just, just one. one. Just one. So we're starting a new segment debuting next week that we're calling This Week in Swim Run. Uh, the idea is that we're, we'll just try to plan on updating everyone on sort of swim run events that are happening around the world and that we've heard about and to showcase sort of cool places where swim runs, where swim runs are happening and, uh, you know, if we can get some short course descriptions and things like that, we'll share that. Yeah, so we just want to amplify all the different races around. You know, it's more than Otolo and, and races around the world, so we want to highlight those. If you did a swim run and you a race, swim and race, if you had one, 
shoot us an email, lowtideboys with the Z at gmail.com, and give us your kind of two cents, uh, and we'll, we will uh, we'll read it out here. I guess it might not happen every week if there isn't a race every week, but exactly. whenever there's a race and we find out about it, we'll let you know about it. Yeah, and just, just to put it out there, um, our majority of our research is going to be from people posting stuff on Instagram, <laughs> so it's not very rigorous or journalistic. So if there's a race that you did that you want us to know about, let us know. We'll totally shout it out. So it's just kind of just to let people know kind of what's happening around the world. And yeah, just kind of see all, all the possibilities that are out there for swim run. So this week on the Low Tide Boys updates, our latest column titled How to Pick an Awesome Swim Run Team Name is out. So make sure to check that out on Triathlete Magazine. Give it a thumbs up, share it on Facebook or wherever you share things. And that just helps us in the show and, and shows Triathlete Magazine to keep producing more swim run content not just by the low tide boys but everybody else that writes swim run content more is better tides lift all ships things along those lines yes but also we want to keep doing these columns yeah because we're having (laughs) we're having fun with it as well so recently we posted our new swim run gear guide to basically help everyone that's looking for a place to start on all things gear um we get asked a ton of questions about Mm -hmm. what socks do we use what Emergency compression bandage. We we well, have what in our suits kit. do you recommend? It's- All that stuff. So we thought uh, put it out there, just listing out everything that we've checked out, that we've tried, that we'd recommend, and that's going to be kind of like a living document as Correct. we learn more about the sport, review more stuff, try more stuff. We'll just keep updating it there. Yeah. So if somebody's like, I don't know anything about swim run, what gear do I need? You can send them the, this swim run gear guide that we have, and it just lists literally head to toe mandatory equipment, solo swim run with a couple recommendations on each. So on to our other new exciting project that the International Swim Run Adventure Guide. We're getting new submissions every week. It's really awesome to to see that. So really appreciate everybody sending those in. Keep sending those in. There's a button right there on the homepage. You click that, there's a little Google form that pops up and you submit all your stuff. Yeah, and as soon as we have a critical mass, uh, we haven't determined yet. You'll be able to find is. that. You'll be able to find out in the resources tab on our website. Yeah, so that is going to be you submitting your little swim run training loops, routes, point to points, wherever your kind of go to swim run spot is. Send that to us with some details, and we will we'll publish all these. So that way, if somebody's traveling to, you know, Boston, Massachusetts, or uh, uh, Washington State, we know. Hey, the swim run labs and in uh, the wet the Boston Wet Sox sent us some stuff. So. So we'll know, and people can use those as resources to to get some awesome swim run adventures going. Yeah, so our final update, I guess, is that our latest episode of Gear Talk is out, where we review the Vivo Barefoot ECS Tempest with the Swim Run Labs. So check that out, and let us know what you think. And if you have any ideas that you want us to, to review, let us know. Yeah, we also, Chris, dropped some first impressions of the new ARC Sports VIG swim run wetsuit that he's trying out spoiler alert i love it that's awesome i'm jealous <laughs> so about this week's show so Car- so i really like this show sorry to interrupt Don't. i really like this show i think um it really to me it speaks to kind of part of the magic of swim run is how people come together for either a long time or a short time to partner up and do races. And in this case, it appears it might be a short time. Um, they've, they've only raced one official race together. Um, this that is, was also like Catalina. Yeah, we're talking about Carolyn and Kelsey. They're really great to talk to. And it was kind of interesting because um, I remember talking to Chipper immediately after the interview, how interesting it was that a lot of storylines – from their Catalina experience, we, we heard it from different versions. Yes. So it kind of, it's, I feel like we got a complete picture of, of Catalina, of, 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 some, of some events that a lot of people have heard about. Like, we don't want to spoil it, but uh, a couple times. It'll, tie, it'll yeah. tie up some loose ends or tie up some things in a nice bow. And if you've been listening for a long time, or at least since kind of the Catalina episodes that we were doing, you'll really enjoy their their kind of race report at the tail end of, of this episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it with Caroline and Kelsey, the Cali Swim Run Girls. Enjoy it. Live it. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> All 
right. With us today, we have Carolyn Wolek and Kelsey Pearson, Cali Swimrun Girls. They're a swimrun team out of San Diego, Carlsbad area. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, one of the questions we always like to ask people is kind of like, how did you discover swim run? But I want to take it back a little bit further and just be like, what kind of sports did you do growing up? And then how did you find swim run? First, okay. Um, so this is Caroline. Uh, I grew up doing a mixture. I did martial arts for a little bit. I just played soccer. But once high school swung around, I uh, committed to swimming year round. And so my background is in swimming. I was a distance swimmer. Um, I swam D1 at Brown for a year and then I stopped because I was a walk on and it just was a lot of hours. Yeah. Um, But when I stopped swimming, I started running and I signed up for my first half. And then after my first half, I did my first marathon. And I had a friend that I swam with in high school and she was familiar with Casco, the US swim run race. Yep. She's like, Caroline, you'd be so good at this. You should do this sport. So when I moved to San Diego, I saw a guy wearing a California swim run shirt. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, it's a thing. So oh, I and, looked and, it up. I found yeah, the email and, address. I emailed him. It was Sean Durkin from California yep, Swim Run. Yep. And he uh, set me up with Andy and Sean and Phil. So those are the swim run monks. Yep. And mm-hmm. yeah, that, the rest was history. <laughs> so so I'm assuming you saw the shirt on the back. It says, you know, tell everyone you know about swim run. Rule it's like, oh, I'm just, I'm just saying what the shirt told me to out. do. Yeah, which if you're in Scotland or what is it? Yeah, Scotland is bad. That's yeah, you don't a, want to say yeah. that in Scotland. Apparently, what is it? That's like it an S and M. Yeah, it's some uh, sexual thing. Oh, An- oh, Andy told us a story. <laughs> yeah, ask I Andy about. That was intentional on their oh, behalf. My God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeez. awesome. All so, right, Kelsey, you're up. <laughs> yeah. You're um, up. So, I uh, grew up in California, and so swimming was like a. a thing I think that everybody just did when they were young um I didn't start swimming until freshman year of high school um swam all throughout high school played water polo all throughout high school and then after high school I stopped picked up running started to do a lot of um half marathons a lot of or actually just a couple marathons um then got into triathlon so started doing the swim bike run thing and uh, did that for a few years then through my coach I he was originally actually he was the original originally introduced me to Andy and uh, Sean Durkin and we did uh, a few of their California swim run races here in San Diego Mm-hmm. And um, that was kind of how I got into swim run. So it was just totally pretty random. Yeah. But interesting. Uh, we yeah. we also did that race a couple of years ago, and that was our our, our intro first, into it uh, as well. Yeah, there's first yeah. race. My only race I've started like at four in the afternoon. Usually oh, when it I'm was finishing, like, it was like at three thirty seven. All right, everybody, let's the go. The boats like, are oh, out of the okay. way. Hop in. Yeah. That was awesome. And then. Yeah. So when did you, when did your two worlds sort of collide? Did you know each other through sw- swimming or, or tell us how, how the Cali Swim Run Girls came about? You want me to t- <laughs> Yeah, tell them. Oh, this sounds like so, it's going to be a good story. Like, oh, geez. It's a great story. So when we first met, it was through Sean in, of the Swim Run Monks. Um, and he like just coordinated, I think Kelsey and Mike is her, our, or our coach now, Mike Lyle. Um, he was doing a swim run at a beach here in Encinitas and we joined them. And I just remember Kelsey was all suited up in a wetsuit and she looked so fit. And I was like, dang, like (laughs) this girl's fit. I'm going to have to really show up today. And she, she's a much faster runner than me. So I tried so hard to keep up on the running. And then she just kind of blew me, like totally blew me away, like left us all in the dust. And then when we went in for the first swim, and I was like, all right, I slammed you one. I'm going to catch him. It's going to be fine. Did not happen. <laughs> I felt so far behind. It was so humbling. And after the swim, I was like, I'm done. I just, we just, just three quit. of us just left. Quit. Just quitting the sport altogether. <laughs> no, no, no. So it was like kind of like a rivalry at first. And then we did a, we did a training thing in Catalina a few weeks later. 
and we were forced to share a bedroom together. So there's two twin beds <laughs> in the oh. same bedroom. Uh-huh. And we did not, we barely spoke a word to each other. But the yeah. first night there, my alarm went off. And I tried to shut it off really gracefully. And instead, I fell out of the bed <laughs> and hit my head on the table. And she started laughing like crazy. It was like five in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And we just both started erupting. Yeah, laughing and that was the beginning yeah. of our it just you were gonna be friends that, that like enemy. broke the yeah. tension of, exactly. of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it sounds like so it just had it all it took was a concussion yeah a cte experience <laughs> and uh yeah i actually thought that was going to go a different direction the way you two were looking at you i thought it was involving a fart but <laughs> yeah that yeah but it's going it went it we i thought that <laughs> so you you guys hit it off, and this is when it sounds like. What year is this kind of happening? And is this when Andy's working with Otolo a little bit about? Hey, I found this Catalina Island. I think we can do a really good race here. And it's mm-hmm. one of these trial things, or was it kind of the, the one of the little camps that you did? Oh no, it was one of his trial things. It was about a year ago. Yeah, about yeah. a year ago. Nice. So you haven't been racing together for too long. What what races have you done? Just Catalina. Just Catalina. Just Catalina. Yeah. Well, what a race to do if you're going to do one. Hey, did you see any buffalo when you were there? No, no. I don't think no. so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, if I'm we heard. did, we must have missed it. Cause... Yeah. No, they yeah. weren't there. I was looking. So yeah, we were looking. If you didn't we took... see him, we didn't see him. Yeah. You you excel. It sounds like you both are, are pretty heavy heavy swimmers. You have a lot of yards on, on the shoulders there. Caroline does I more. Big shoulders. Yeah, more. <laughs> so are we... She, very, very strong, very strong, strong I think swimmer. you're a strong swimmer, too, but, like, I feel like, I mean, she's, my running doesn't even come close to hers, but. Yes, it does. We each have a strong suit, and I would say mine is probably the same. Yeah. So, are, are, are you, like, leading out all the swims? Do you guys rotate in the water, or is it. Yeah, but I made that mistake in Catalina, and I should have let Kelsey lead a bunch more swims, because she is very impressive in the waters. So. Well. <laughs> that was my beat. We learned a lot. We learned a lot. In Catalina, Catalina but. but she led all the swims, yes, in Catalina. That's what I wish Chipper would do, but he won't. What? <laughs> yeah, I just want to yeah. hang back. I, I, We're I, really I, bringing I, this up right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're fighting right now? <laughs> I just want to kick back. Dude. We, uh, do you still consider yourself a triathlete, or are you, do, are you doing triathlons as well? And where does sort of swim run fit into both of your sort of endurance athletic resume or career? So for me, I, when I started triathlon, um, I wanted to become a pro. And um, so I took it very seriously for a few years um, and then realized that it just was a lot of time um, for just maybe a little reward, reward as far as racing pro. And so I backed off a bit. Then I just, I always loved swimming and running the most. Mm-hmm. The bike took up a lot of time because um, you're spending most of your hours on the bike. So I loved swimming and running. So uh, when I found this sport, I was like, this is my jam. I, <laughs> I, I and, it, and it, when I started doing it, it was adventure racing pretty much. I mean, yeah, that's exactly. how it felt. It was like. And I was more of a, a team sport kind of person in the first place. And triathlon is very individual. And mm-hmm. um, so just being able to, to work together with somebody was something that I personally really loved um, from this swim run sport. Yeah. And, and you don't have to travel with a bike anymore, which is. Yeah, oh, that is just, uh, nice. so convenient. Yeah. That's one of the ways I, I try to pitch the sport to people. It's like, oh, you're a triathlete. Imagine going to a race without having to worry about your bike. Seems yeah. Like a, a dream. <laughs> and, yeah. and Carol, Carolyn there, what do you, where, where do you, <laughs> I, where does it fit into your endurance CV? <laughs> I never did triathlon. I hate cycling. It's a burning passion. <laughs> Sorry to like, burning passion. <laughs> wow. I would so oh don't even get me started. I don't want to offend anyone because I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. <laughs> I like I love swimming and running. Um I it was my main focus. I've only lived in San Diego not even two years now, so it was my main focus while I was living here. But I'm gonna probably take a few months off and then once the races start happening again, get back to training for it, maybe. We'll see. Mm-hmm. 
but <laughs> yeah. Right. And my understanding, you guys aren't going to be close, right? Because Kelsey, are you moving somewhere else? No, Caroline. Caroline. Caroline? Oh, okay. And uh, are you guys going to remain swimmer and partners? Long distance swimmer and partners? There's a lot to be determined. <laughs> For the most part, like I mean, I would obvi- I would love to. She's going to med school, um, so that's going to mm. be a uh, lot of time I'm... from for her to try and you know train yeah. and travel while starting and going to med school. I would obviously we we wanted to do the Odyssey Michigan swim run in the, at the end of August, and we had all plans to go, and we had plans to go to Sweden for the mm-hmm. World Championships, and. We were just trying to do something like a last race together or like we've only done one race together. So yeah. like it would be amazing to be able to do like one final race before she has to start med school. But unfortunately, it's just, you know, it's not going to work yeah, out. That way. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, Caroline's going to take some time off mm-hmm. uh, and hopefully, you know, next year, maybe during summer, we'll, we'll have a chance to race again. Yeah. Um, but I, my husband's a swimmer and a runner too. So maybe him and I can yeah. try and, well, oh. if you need advice, be a mixed team together. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> if you want marital advice about that, we can connect you with the Boston wet Sox there. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you that, know those two. They're we, yeah. We yeah they're them. awesome. So a couple of, that. couple of studs out there. Yeah. Those, <laughs> those two. Oh yeah. Um, so Andy Hewitt. Who, who you mentioned? Who we've all mentioned a couple times here. That we we've been calling him the Godfather of Swim Run. He is the Godfather. <laughs> Not yeah. just because he's our first patron, but um, he he sent us an email randomly at you know some odd hour, which I, I noticed is kind of a trend about yeah. in, inviting us to some person that we didn't know's fiftieth or sixtieth birthday swim run yeah. party with a hand drawn map on a Google. Google Maps printed out thing with like, you know, a 0.05 millimeter uh, pen drawing R1, R2, S1. And he sent us that email and he's like, hey, you guys want to come down for this? And this is like middle of, hey, we can barely go to Trader Joe's to get some (laughs) get some muffins. And he's like, oh, just come down for the swim run. And from my understanding, Kelsey, you you participated in said birthday swim run. Yeah, yeah. How yeah, Caroline it? did too yeah, as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, well, that was your swan song. Well, can we uh, cool. can we get a, a little race report, like unofficial swimmer and adventure race report on this thing? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. Um, I'll start just, and yeah. then you could yeah. ch- chip in or whatever. But <clears throat> it started at La Jolla Cove, and um, there was about fourteen of us, mm-hmm. twelve of us. Um, pretty pretty solid group. Yeah, yeah, that's, it was a that's good, nice. Good group. Um, we had one person actually come down from like San Francisco area and join us. Who is this person? Started at uh, La Jolla Cove, and we started with a swim. So we swam from La Jolla Cove across to the pier around the pier, which is about a mile and a half, a mile and a half swim. Wow. I would just say it's like two miles. Took us forty three minutes. Some people but. drifted. And it <laughs> oh, depending on your line. Depending yeah, on your exactly. line. Okay. <laughs> now, now, did you have the current with you, or was uh? It was against us. Was against that you. One. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and what time did all these festivities kick off? Seven? Around seven. Okay. Yeah. Well, so no, no, like, no, I'm sure knowing Andy, it started at like seven seventeen or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was. It was yeah. like seven fifteen. Yeah. Um, and then from there we headed north and just, um, ran on the beach the the whole way and got in random, well, not random, but on the map, it showed us, you know, where we were going to get in and, and swim. Um, and it was, yeah, it was an epic day. It was beautiful. It was warm. The water was warm. I did the whole thing in a bikini. That's how warm it was. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's yeah. like OG triathlon. Need... Yeah. 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 So it's just like, I mean, like, we didn't like a bikini need and a pool buoy. Wet huh? Wetsuits. Or we had our paddles and yeah. um, we had Mike Lyle's wife, Jenny. She was um, supporting us mm-hmm. with um, nutrition and food oh, awesome. and um, electrolytes and 
she made like these little rice balls with peanut butter and jelly in the middle and coconut chocolate in the middle. And then mm-hmm. later on, she had Sounds Coca-Cola amazing. and cookies when yeah. we were like towards the end. I'm I hungry. mean, it was um, full out. I mean, we're definitely, stations. we're definitely, for whenever this guy's next birthday is, I guess around this time last there. year, yeah, around <laughs> next year, let's go. Three weeks ago <laughs> next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so how many, what was the total, what was the stats on, on that one for, from total distance as well as the swim and the run, if you happen to know off the top of your head? <laughs> it was 27 miles total. It was six miles of swimming and uh, 21 miles of It's running. a big day. Yeah. But it was all beach running, all flat. There was like maybe damn. two or three hills where we'd have to get into a campground or something. But Okay. Yeah. Like beach yeah. as in on the sand or more like the boardwalk kind of thing? On the sand. But the sand oh. is flat. And like it's pretty compact, so it's not. Mm-hmm. Wasn't like destroying your calves. No. Oh that's man, good. where every your every step you're sinking yeah. in. Those yeah. that's the no, worst. it wasn't like that. Okay. It, it was actually it was kind of nice because it was a flatter day. There wasn't a lot of surf, but yeah. there's still like surfers you had to dodge on their longboards and stuff. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and the water was super clear, so it was kind of like swimming somewhere tropical with the warm water. You could see the fish. Yeah, it was super. It was cool. so nice. And then. Very similar to the water at uh, Catalina, I noticed, in, in comparison to um, where we're swimming in an aquatic park in Ghirardelli Square. It's a little, it's a little murky, murky, to be generous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here it goes in and out. It can be yeah. murky, but it also can be super clear. It's not like Catalina where it's pristine year-round. Yeah, I felt like we like snuck into a big uh, aquarium or something. <laughs> yeah. It was like swimming around with all the fishies and everything going, going around. Um, yeah. Yeah, so so fourteen people attending that, and you, where did you kind of arrive? Is this a is this a local kind of Andy Hewitt California swim run type of uh, group, or is this just uh, are these people regularly training every weekend? What kind of what's the uh, swim run community like down there in in San Diego area? Yeah, we're very close with the swim run community because it's not too big out here which is like i mean it's kind of surprising but a lot of triathletes are here um Mm -hmm. and oh yeah (laughs) surprisingly there's very small swim run so swim runners so it's cool that we do kind of have a small community and most of the people that joined us that day were all you know swim runners like the swim run monks they were there um and then of course andy and his partner mel they were there and um Mike Lyle, he's he was he's David swim. Lipke, Lip yeah David Lipke is a sw- he was at Catalina too yeah so yeah we had a, a good group of swim runners and we all find each other here we uh, yeah 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 so you're we just out doing doing a swim run practice or somebody runs into Andy and then he emails like four people is that what yeah. happens yeah. usually yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's exactly. it's, it's funny because up here. It's the same story. There aren't too many swim runners, and uh, you're talking to them both. Yeah, <laughs> that's not, that's not uh, true. We do have. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we have, we have a, about ten. Yeah, that we here. know about. Well, for we know sure. about. We don't but, know the San Francisco person that drove down, though. But yeah, we don't know that person, and apparently, oh. apparently, there was like, uh, you know, there was some team that was training in an aquatic park, and I got like four texts from different people being like, "Hey, do you know these two people? They're like running in wetsuits." <laughs> And I was like, what, what am I, you know, how, I don't know them. I would like to know who they are, but yeah, I don't know who they are. So it's, it's funny that I think the community up here is growing too, but it's just, it's just such a new sport, I think. Yeah. Well, what's also funny about down here is there are triathletes that know about swim running. Like they, they mm-hmm. know what it is. They know the sport, but they're so, I think just focused, focused on locked triathlon. in triathlon yeah. they don't really give swim run a, a shot you know they don't know what they're missing <laughs> okay that i was kind of leading into that go ahead well i was just gonna say you know our favorite triathlete magazine no oh. amber <laughs> yes from amber from Ferrer. team uh for her from team better tether together oh yeah. yeah i feel like her approach is so anti sort of iron man training where she's not spending 20 hours a week on the bike um yeah. and she's just trying to have fun and i think for her doing swim run this year, I mean, she was trying to qualify for worlds and everything, but it was almost like, uh, you know, just like a break, something yeah. to test fitness, but not, you know, a lot of the, uh, 
the community down there, the swim runners, are they are they quote unquote identifying as yes, I'm a swim runner, or they're like, oh, I, I do triathlons too, and they're more of a just a generalized endurance, or how or are they so committed to swim run that that that's what they are? I think we're committed to swim run. Yeah, I think all the swim runners are pretty swim committed runners. to being a swim runner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then the triathletes that you know, there's a pretty healthy same in the Bay Area. There's a pretty healthy. Uh, contingency when they're uh, when you're running with the pool buoy or running in your bikini with the pool buoy and paddles on um, are they are they curious about what's going on since it, it does have so much familiarity with triathlon or are they just like you said they're just hey uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna jump on the trainer for a couple hours here and just grind out another trainer session it's 50 50 yeah, because it's cool. Sometimes we'll be running and people will actually recognize the sport and they'll be like, oh, swim run. And we're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then sometimes they'll be like, do you swim in your shoes? And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, I mean, we get some funny looks when we do training yeah, for sure. on the on the roads out here. They, I, You know, people definitely are like, what are those people doing? Yeah. Yeah. I actually, like, I actually think there's three types of reactions when they see swim runners. Uh, yeah. you know, as, as a first instance, I think the first one is like, oh, these people are just crazy. Yeah. I think the second <laughs> is, oh, they're like Navy SEALs or something. Like oh, there's some athletes. militant aspect. Yeah, to like it. some, yeah. Su- you know, super people or whatever. And then third is just like intense curiosity to the point where they might stop you and be like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, <laughs> what, do, what yeah. do you wear? <laughs> Why do you have your wetsuit on backwards? Like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's real. Yeah, we do. We've been actually stopped in the water and other swimmers are like, what? you have your... What's with all the gear? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm just trying to swim right now, but uh, maybe we could talk, maybe we could talk cool. later. It's like, <laughs> let me just give you my card. Yeah. But it is true. Like, I'm not kidding you. Sometimes we'll be getting out of the water with all of our gear and somebody on the beach or whatever looks at us and they're like, what do you, what is all that stuff? What do you have? Yep. And we're like, we're just, we're get, we're trying to go. <laughs> we can't talk. <laughs> Training. Yeah. 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 And we, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we're getting, we're getting stuff like that too. So I'm telling you, I think, I, I think it's a universal thing. First impression yeah. of swim runners. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that's not just three. I'm yeah. Sure there's more. There could be, maybe there's five. Yeah. I don't know sure. the other two though. <laughs> so your first race as a team is, is Catalina Otolo's first journey into the, into the United States. And, yeah. um, I would say that's a pretty, pretty impressive race to to take on and tackle. What was your your team's approach to that race? And it sounds like you had a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say insider knowledge, but you had trained on the course at least once or twice, I would guess. Um, yeah. So you had at least you knew what was coming a little bit. Yeah. But uh, we'd love to hear kind of your approach and how the race uh, unfolded for you too. What? Fine, I'll go first. <laughs> course changed a bunch, so we did a several different courses. Um, but we didn't know it was going to be hilly and that the swims would be spectacular and that it was a swimmer friendly course, but also a trail runner friendly course with all the elevation. Yeah. For me as a swimmer, <laughs> the hills were so brutal for me. <laughs> it's like, so from the start of the race on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First, yeah. first half of the race. First hill, yeah. It, we were going up on the first hill and I was like, Kelsey, Kelsey, wait. Yeah. Snitch, wait. Her nickname's oh. Snitch. Oh She's all, stop, Snitch, stop. <laughs> I can't do it. Wait, yeah. ho- wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Your nickname's Snitch? Yeah. yeah. You know you know that snitches get stitches, right? Yeah. You know about that? Okay, okay, just making sure. Maybe she got, yeah. maybe that's why she, she has a bunch of stitches. <laughs> so there's a reverse yeah. nickname. Oh god. There you go. Yeah, we uh on the start of that race we're we're kind of lined up where we were just kind of back of the pack. We, yeah, we were kind of in the middle somewhere. I'm like, like oh, it's saying cold. I'm putting on my arm warmers and I'm like zipping oh, all the oh. way up. Oh yeah, and and then and then I'm like, oh look, looks like all like the fast people are are cab down to start. And it's like we should probably do that. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like holy shit! I missed the countdown on that giant cannon. I think <laughs> I think Mots and Michael were so excited to shoot it off that they like forgot yeah. about. I that mean, part that or cannon something. scared the shit out of me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they were talking in Swedish and I was just like blocking it out or something, yeah. but I was just like, what? And then, uh, yeah, and like we've mentioned many times, you know, that first, there there should be a gondola taking you up to the top of that hill. I mean, it oh. it's a it steep, was, it was a 47% knee scraper. or something. It was a knee scraper. I thought it was inverted at one point, but yeah. I, I couldn't verify and stop. <laughs> like they're sure walking upside down. Yeah. So Kelsey was 
you were you were motivating or st- Stitch was motivating up the hill and you didn't yes. let you didn't let her go. You said the no, I see the water right there. If we could just make it there, I know we'll set her free and she'll she'll well, take off. Let me continue. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too, but right before the first swim as I was putting on my goggles, mm-hmm. they just snapped apart. So we thought we were gonna do the whole race without goggles. Yeah. Um or at least one pair of goggles. Yeah, so one pair of goggles. Caroline yeah. was leading the swim and when we got out of the first swim on the course, her ga- her goggles snapped. Just before the first swim. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. It was. It was right before the first swim. Her her oh. goggles snapped in half and there was like she she kind of like jimmy rigged it to get it back together and it, it, it worked for the first swim and then we got out and she was like, These are completely snapped in half and I was like, wow. Okay, let's keep running and uh yeah problem solve you know know, we'll think about what we can do so i was like well if you're gonna lead the swims you take my goggles again that is the true spirit of swim run (laughs) that's it you harnessed it now you have to do all the work because you're the only one with goggles so i can just chill in the back on the tether (laughs) so i was like i'll you know be tethered behind you and i'll just kind of lift my head up and try and swim as best as I can behind you, but, you know, I'll give you my goggles and we'll see what else we could do. So we got into the second swim, which is like across the little bay, you yeah, know, yeah. like a small yeah. little short swim. And I was terrible. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was just, I mean, it, it, it felt hard. It was like weird, not swimming with goggles. Yeah, and yeah. We both, we both wear contacts. So yeah. that was interesting. Oh. Um, so after that swim, you know, we had that like what well, was you it, had like six a miles to think about. <laughs> you had six yeah. miles to think about how crappy it was going to be for the rest of the race. Yeah. So during that climb, we were with um, that be- better tethered team, Amber and her yep. partner. Better tethered Aaron. together. Yeah. And we were, we were with them and I was, you know, I was just asking anybody like, do you have an extra pair of goggles that, you know, anything that could, you know, be useful for us. And, um, anybody that we passed, nobody had an extra pair. So we were kind of just going to go with probably cause game. you were passing them too. You're like, <laughs> Oh fuck these girls. They're like asking for shit. Yeah. They're, they're whipping us on this hill why we kick rocks in your face <laughs> you. Uh, do you have any extra goggles yeah. can we get some goggles yeah. please? please so yeah we were just kind of gonna go and and uh, you Deal know yeah one person was gonna have goggles and the other person wasn't so during that whole climb up the mountain and then coming down that mountain there was that swim what was it parsons, parsons landing, landing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the yeah. hardest the hardest That's swim of the day the crazy, you know, choppy yeah. swim. So we get down to the aid station and we're like about to get into the water. And all of a sudden my husband, he did the race as well. Um, he comes running down the mountain and he was with a, a, a male partner at the time. And I was like, Chris, we need goggles. Like, <laughs> we don't, we only have one pair. And he was like, really? And he's like, here, take my goggles. So he gave us his goggles. His exact words were like, you guys have been training for this so much harder and longer than I have. Just take my goggles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're like, oh, my God. Bless you. Savior. So, Husband of the year. Uh, yeah. So, Honestly. yeah, he gave us his goggles and we went into that swim. And um, and then, and then you them. lost the goggles because it was so uh, the waves just knocked them off of you. <laughs> that no, would have been that, tragic. Oh, that would have been really bad. That would have been terrible. That would have been a sacred sign that it was not meant to be. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably <laughs> probably a good point. So you had functioning goggles for the for the rest of um, yeah the rest of it. Okay. And yeah. did your so then your husband Chris raced without goggles or did he get some hookup somewhere? Oh, so funny story. <laughs> so his partner ended up giving him his goggles because he was leading the swim. So. Chris took his partner's goggles, did that Parsons Landing swim, and then uh, you know we ran through the uh, the, the YMCA, the, yeah, the YMCA yeah. camp, whatever it was, and somebody at the camp had goggles and gave them their got like wow. in wow. the camp gave them their goggles. Yeah. So 
They have, yeah, they you, got goggles. You know, you're not it. the only team to have a goggle. That's issue the second goggle story. Yeah, that we've heard at that same around the same same swim. Yep. Yeah. The really? the the swim run labs, they were a goggle down. And uh, Annie's, Annie's husband, Brent, who was doing his first swim run, incidentally. Oh, you know, that's yes. Chris and Brent. Chris yeah. was partners we with Brent. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's one story. <laughs> yes. We just connected we just all this. We tied this, these dots together. And you know what's funny? I was, I was like, e-stalking you guys to get some intel for the show because I'm trying to be like a journalist about this shit. And I saw a picture of you two with this guy. I'm like, that guy looks really familiar. Yes. Like he looks so well, he's, familiar. He's a tall giant person, tool, right? Super tall dude. Yeah. 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 So yeah. he's not a giant. I mean, he's no, like, you know, yeah, he's above average. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's so funny. I can't yeah. believe he looks familiar, uh, but I just couldn't like, I don't know. That know, is like hilarious. Small yeah. community. I love I it. I yeah. Kind of funny how that, how that happened. Yeah. But yeah, it was Brent, Brent and Chris, my husband, yeah. they were, they were partners and so random. They came Too down funny. that hill like right at the right time. Cause I was like, I know if I see Chris, he will give me his goggles. Like I am his wife. I know he will. Yeah. <laughs> he loves that's, you. He better. Me. Yeah. He better. <laughs> yeah. If he doesn't, he's staying at two harbors right. for a couple of nights. You see that yeah. campground you ran through. You'll be staying there tonight. <laughs> if you don't give me those goggles. They're not coming back. From the boat. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So it sounded like you had a little adversity the first few legs, but if you're, if you're hanging with with Amber and Aaron of Better Tethered together, you're you're sniffing the front of the pack. So yeah. once you got your goggle situation sorted out, how did what was your sort of maybe mm-hmm. were you, what was your how did tell me about a little bit about your how your mindset changed and then when you received these the magic goggles. Yeah, were you just running like how four did, minute miles? You're just you're so like, stoked. <laughs> let's go. Let's open the governor. Let's go. So when we first lost the goggles, we were a little deflated. Because we were like, okay, you know, we may, you know, we'll just see what happens. We just, we were kind of, well, I mean, we were definitely bummed. Well, the uh, race has just started. I mean, so you, you have, have five so, miles of swimming. Yeah, left. I mean, you have like, yeah. you know, four hours more of this, you know, five yeah. hours more of this. So it was either going to turn into a really long day or we were, I mean, we were going to finish. We were used to DNF. Yeah, yeah, we were going to finish. We just, it was just, it may have been a really long day. So, yeah, we got the goggles, and I think we were just stoked. We were like, okay, like, let's let's do this. Yeah, I mean, everything, every part after that was, I mean, uh, it was good. Um, she's being kind to me. <laughs> so, no, no. Yeah. I mean, the swim, the swimming, Caroline led every swim, and, and that was something that I think we learned was not a good idea for yeah. one person to mm-hmm. lead all of that swimming the whole time yeah we just had never raced together so we were kind of just it was learning it was yeah. a lot of learning for sure. both of us I think we we also so as our first race together is definitely a huge learning experience for both of us I think we both could have done better with nutrition yeah that was a big factor that yeah hurt it's us a it's a fickle sugar. fickle beast to tame and swim run because yeah there's only yeah, one can't leg carry that, that much on board. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Other than just trying to guzzle like you're at a uh, water trough at every aid yeah. station. Did you guys have yeah. a shared kind of nutrition plan, or was it like yeah. all? Oh, sure yeah. yeah. Or did you have a plan? Unfortunately, we had no nutrition plan really, which sounds so. It sounds it terrible. Sounds so they, they did have on course. Sure. Energy stations. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. we were we were relying on the aid stations, and um, it just didn't have what we expected. Yeah. Mm. So we were bonking for sure. Yeah. Um, I had she was light problem. She was cramping yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, then it started to get a little bit cold for me, at least yeah. throughout the end of the race. Yeah. It yeah. started to get colder, yeah. which would threw me off a little bit, but. Um, yeah, we just, yeah, I think we, we bonked pretty hard at the end with the nutrition. That was a big yeah. lesson. Um, but we kept we kept pushing as, yeah. as hard as we physically could at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. We held on to second until the very last. We did a crazy story. We were second place female for all of, pretty much all of the race until the very 
very last swim, yeah. um, Helen and Isabella. Isabella, Isabella. They, or yeah. amazing girl. They're yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. Oh no, yeah. we we we're interviewed aware. them. We interviewed them <laughs> for their night, race report after the race, and uh, they told us how they passed you at the last little. Yeah. Bit yeah. Of that swim. Yep. Yeah. They they totally crushed us at On that last swim. last swim, and I mean they're incredibly strong athletes. Based, yeah, uh, they're studs. Physically, mentally, like just yeah. crazy, but. Yeah, Not crazy in a good way. But no, no, oh, yeah, for good, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, that was what happened, and we learned was, a lot that day. Yeah, <laughs> we learned a lot. Yeah, so I guess if you would have had the nutrition doubt, I mean, of course, you can Monday morning quarterback this thing, right? I mean, that's you know, easy forever. To do. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it sounds like the classic swim run story. There's some adversity. Yes. You have to problem solve. You have to work together. You have to take care right. of each other. Awesome. You have this adventure. Find spare goggles. Yep. You know, all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it happens to everybody. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, we, we kind of, you, you, you had an amazing race, right? But yeah. everyone's having that experience in their way. And I think that's one of the things that makes the sport so interesting because, you know, it's, it's a big equalizer when you're covering that that ty- that type of distance and that type of terrain, um, yeah, yeah sure. it's it's just interesting that because like, we we were having I mean we didn't have any goggle issues but yeah we're having all the same problem getting cold, you know yeah. w- running trying to run really fast to warm up for the next swim <laughs> like all that shit and uh, yeah. yeah you know we finished like three hours after you guys so you know. <laughs> yeah, they ran out of burgers almost. Um, <laughs> No. Did they really? <laughs> no. Oh well, that I'm so sad. No, we, I, had, we I think doing, I had double, doing veggie burger. I had double, double veggie, veggie burger, burger. So, oh. you know, which is you know my thing Whatever. anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. So okay. So I'm I'm getting the sense from both of you that you felt like the Cali swim run girls. They didn't. You didn't put your a a, a game forward, and you kind of wanted a second, yeah, second stab at that. So you're hu- you're real hungry after after Catalina. Yeah. Um, what I mean, you know. Unfortunately, the world totally changed after that with COVID. But what what kind of what were your what were your plans as as the Cali Swim Run Girls for 2020? We wanted to podium in Sweden. Yeah, we were training pretty hard after. I mean, we took some time off after Catalina, but we were re- we were going full force for Sweden. Yeah, training. So you guys had your slot, and then it was more about like you weren't going to do any other races. You were just going to train and get ready for for the World Championship. We yeah. talked about doing Casco Bay before because it would have been like a good, you know, pre race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Practice. Actually, very similar you know, to, in style to, from what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Like get any, you know, Just a tune up. Yeah, tune up. That was kind of what we wanted to do and, and plan to go to Sweden. And where our, all of our training was focused to go to Sweden. Yeah. And I've never run that much in my life. Yeah, we yeah. were forty four K or whatever. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that that's uh or no, it's forty four miles, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's like nine I'm not going to speak anymore. Um, yeah, don't do it. I mean, I'm, <laughs> don't do I'm it. not going to try to do that math in my head ro- right real no. quick like I'm slick. Man, that must have been I mean, you know, obviously the coronavirus COVID-19 stuff sucks, but Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a bummer, but you know, training is good, right? You guys feel like you're got a, some 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 arrows in your quiver that if you get an opportunity to go out there again, you can just fall back on. Well, well we don't really know cuz she's going to medical school, so we don't know if we would actually get another yeah. shot to to go again next year or, you know, maybe in well, 4 years. Is, <laughs> if it does happen next year, I do have the 12 weeks off before. Yeah. Ooh. So, well, there you go. Yeah. That yeah. could be well, and I would say, as someone who hasn't gone to med school, uh, the, the first two years are the real tough ones, and then once you're on, the, once you're doing the wards, you know, you might get like yeah. an easy, get a couple easy rotations. Yeah, and you're good. <laughs> Thanks, doctor. We will see. I need to feel that out because, right. yeah, education's changing a lot too because of COVID. Oh COVID yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, but I think that was the beautiful thing about Mike's birthday swim run is it kind of gave us something to do. Mm-hmm. It was like a impromptu race. Almost. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it almost kind of brings you back to the roots of it. I think one of the things we really like about the sport is the just the adventure piece of it. Yeah. And exactly. that doesn't you don't need to have a race bib to experience that. I think almost especially with swim run, unlike triathlon where, yeah, you could swim, bike and run in a day or whatever. Um 
doesn't have the same juice as oh, I'm going to go on a three hour swim run adventure and we'll see what happens. Yeah. It was cool. It was a very, it was like a destination point to point. Course. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we yeah. started La Jolla ended in Carlsbad. Yeah. Okay. And then is your, most of your swim run sort of training happening in, in La Jolla or where did the, where does that end up for, for both of you now? Like um, if you're going to go do a swim run practice, where, whereabouts are you going to go in that area? Like and halfway between the two, it's Encinitas or it's in Carlsbad. I, when I was swimming and running more with the Swim Run Monks and mm-hmm. Andy, it was more in La Jolla and down south. But it's kind of like there's a north training area and then a south okay. training area. So you have two so. little training grounds, which yeah. uh, were we we at, you, you should send us those two training grounds because we're we're making a repository of all this stuff. Yeah. The what is it called again? The International the International S- Swim Run Adventure Guide. Oh. So yeah. whatever you go, if you find the place that you want to swim run or you want to try it out, like right. I was on vacation in Lake Tahoe last weekend and I'm like now I know a little yeah, area Rub- that like, I yeah, can, like Rubicon like, Trail. Yeah, you can jump can, into the Emerald I'm just gonna Well there is Emerald Bay. There yeah. is Emerald Bay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so so our thought for that is is to kind of just have this all live on the website. So if someone's traveling or, you know, with swim runners or expanding, they'll have places to go train and, and check out. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's like little routes. Maps exactly. 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 Yep, with all the Strava stuff and, and all that, that good stuff. That would be great. That would make traveling very awesome, you know, because... Yeah. I hope yeah. international travel becomes a thing again because I'm uh, yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, that's sort of on us as Americans. It's not on me. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to get political. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his mask on right now. He's too masked on, actually. <laughs> we really appreciate and, and love to hear your, your two journey the, about the Cali Swim Run Girls, how you came to be sm- smashing heads on tables in the middle of the night. Yeah. Like something out of a WWE match. I love it. Sounds like. <laughs> yeah. And after that, it was a hit. You had a, I'm sure to you too, what you would call a not an not an A performance, but you got third at Catalina in your very first race, which is a ultra impressive result. Um, and it sounds like the Cali Swimming Girls, there is a possibility, like in Dumber Dumber, so there is a chance that you two will race again. <laughs> if people want to find out more about the Cali Swimming Girls or you two individually, where whereabouts would they go to, to follow your, your journey? Our very unactive, <laughs> inactive uh, Instagram account, <laughs> Cali Swimming Girls. Okay. Well, now you're going to at least have one post when this episode yeah. comes out. You can tell yeah. Yeah. You'll have to be active, you know, in you'll a have couple to be weeks. at least active, yeah, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Just, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you what Thursday you need to be active. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for taking the time to, to chat with us and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thank you for listening to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and leave a review on iTunes if you're so inclined. You can also sign up for a newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at The Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, drop us an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run activities, hobbies, and other bullshit we do. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then run to the finish line. And just keep going until you're done. Yes. Or until run you to cross the, or, the finish line. Or run to the car. Or run to your car. Somewhere. Just keep running. Peace. Peace.